welcome back guys uh, in this video tutorial we'll be talking about the akt pathway akt pathway is also related to all the type of uh, living of the cell pathway that means uh, let me take a color first here so uh, there are two different types of pathways that we can see depending upon the, what they actually tell the cell to do one is a living pathway another one is the death pathway now this AKT, PIC kinase and also mTOR all these pathways ultimately leads the cell towards living that means the cell growth and cell proliferation for a while rather than the death. So AKT pathway serves two important points one is the cell growth and proliferation alongside it also helps the cell not to pass through an apoptosis so no apoptosis so prevent the apoptosis to occur to the cell. So these are the two important uh, features provided by uh, the AKT pathway inside the cell. Now let's look at the pathway itself. AKT pathway unlike any other pathways, uh, I mean like, like all other pathways, AKT is also having the signaling molecule. So the signaling molecule in case of AKT pathway also growth factors, the different kinds of growth hormones and factors like uh, epidermal growth factor vascular endothelial growth factor or platelet derived growth factor and there are many different types of growth factors available so all these growth factors are also acting as the signaling molecule for akt pathway and the receptor for akt pathway are enzymatic re receptors which are having enzymatic functionality related to them and one example here is the receptor tyrosine kinase type of receptor that are present there so they function just like the tyrosine kinase family receptors so the process start when the receptor tyrosine kinase are embedded in the membrane and any kind of growth factor just bind with that receptor so the ligand of the growth factor binds with the receptor tyrosine kinase and what it does it phosphorylates one of the receptor tyrosine kinase then that uh, subunit phosphorylate the other subunit by cross phosphorylation and then the, they form the active complex and then they will bring this phosphatidylinositol by bisphosphate that is PIP2 and this PIP2 is then being converted to PIP3 in intermediate through an intermediate that that is the PI3 kinase now that is the intermediate that was formed and we previously saw the pathway of PI3 kinase but the thing is once they produce this PIP3 from PIP2 by the PIP3 uh, PI3 uh, kinase that PIP3 or phosphatidylinositol triphosphate Remember all of these phosphatidylinositols, they are embedded in the membrane. All of these, they are embedded inside the membrane. So once PIP3 is uh, produced inside the membrane, I mean in the membrane, that PIP3 will activate AKT. Now here comes the core of this whole, whole pathway because we tell it as an AKT pathway. So now AKT is a protein out there. This AKT is having serine and thionine, both of these amino acid groups present there. So AKT gets phosphorylated in both this terminal serine as well as serine in all these cases. So once the AKT is phosphorylated twice there, AKT becomes activated. Now once the AKT is activated, AKT can uh, perform three important, three types of important tasks. One task is uh, to help in the growth proliferation and they provide this task by phosphorylating another set of molecules another set of proteins inside the cell which are called as mTOR mTOR are typical proteins once they are phosphorylated they recruit other proteins and help in transcription or activating transcription genes uh, gene, I mean transcription of different genes and transcription of I mean and they recruit the transcription factors and those transcription factors helps in producing mRNA and finally helps in producing proteins of our desire then the cell growth and proliferation take place properly on the other hand, this is this is one of the things. The second thing, these uh, AKT also block the apoptosis pathway inside the cell. So many other proteins inside the cell which are responsible for apoptosis or programmed cell death are inactivated by AKT by phosphorylation. For example, NF kappa B, and this is a stress response type of protein. BAD is another uh, protein required in the intrinsic pathway or mitochondrial pathway of apoptosis, which are also been blocked. MDM2 is another protein which in collaboration with p53 works together that is also been blocked so all these proteins which helps in the apoptosis or programmed cell death are blocked because we know akt wants the cell to grow akt is a living kind of 
cell signaling pathway so in that case it will block all the apoptosis machineries and only take over with this growth and cell proliferation and the third thing as you can see it helps in the cell cycle and glucose metabolism a little bit that is another thing because you know as you go for cell growth we also need the cell to uh, cell cycle to occur and, and to divide and grow so that thing is also another part of the AKT pathway so this is how the AKT pathway works now remember the regulation of AKT, AKT pathway also re, I mean here by P10 which is uh, also been a regulator for PI3 kinase majorly because it can shift PIP3 back to PIP2 if there is no PIP3 there won't be any AKT activated so definitely P10 plays a vital role as a regulator of both PI3 kinase as well as AKT pathway which is in collaboration with so that's how the AKT pathway works now if you look at here this is the way of how AKT is activated that we have already studied but uh, this is a better picture anyway so you can see it here this is the receptor let's say the and we have here the PIP2 embedded in the membrane that's why I put this image because it is clear it is telling us the this this PIP2 and PIP3 are present in the membrane embedded in the membrane so once PIP2 is there then PIC kinase actually convert this PIP2 into PIP3 PIC kinase is not embedded in the membrane this is a protein in cytosol so now PIP3 is produced then PIP3 will be converted uh, I mean we, this PIP3 will add a phosphate group uh, to AKT and that's what is going on here and for this also they require ATP because all this type of kinase uh, pathways or phosphorylation they require a phosphate donor ATP uh, works as a phosphate donor so once AKT uh, is, uh, is phosphorylated it's active it does the stuff for cell growth and proliferation prevents the stuff for apoptosis like caspases and all these things now final thing what are the importance of AKT pathway I've been telling you the three important things first thing is it helps in promotion of all those all those increased translation of all the genes that are necessary for cell to grow and divide and to proliferate so they will tag on to S6 and all these things via mTOR because AKT cannot directly interact with the transcription factors for directly interacting with the transcription factor AKT needs to activate mTOR by phosphorylating it and then mTOR will activate S6 and uh, and other like CRAB these are all transcription factors so once they are phosphorylated they are active and they help in the translation of all those important proteins inside the cell on the other hand you can see it here like second thing is inhibition of apoptosis and it blocks the apoptosis by all this blocking of all these proteins like BAD like FKHR and all these different proteins by uh, phosphorylating them and finally uh, the third thing is inhibition of cyclin D1 proteolysis because it wants cell to grow and pass the cell cycle stages for completion of cell cycle and cell division so inhibition of cyclin D1 is halted by down regulating here GSK3 so in this sense this is all the different functions of AKT pathway and AKT pathway is really important because it connects the PIC kinase pathway with the mTOR pathway and finally it completes the triad of PICK, AKT and mTOR pathway to finally tell a cell to live for a long time and preventing apoptosis inside the cell. So if you like the video please hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button also, share this video with your friends and I hope that's helpful and uh, be updated to get more videos like that.